All right, folks, here we go. Uh, I'm flying an extra 330LT with a clear canopy so I can see everything around me. Here I'm flying around and above Manhattan. So um, I'm looking around, just surveying the surroundings. You can see a tiny uh, reflective clip uh, on top of my baseball hat. That is being tracked by Track IR, showing four lights just above my head, beyond the monitor. Uh, you can already see distortions. Just look at the panels, look at the instrument panels, and look at the buildings. Uh, see how they change in size and width as I rotate around, and they get panned from the center towards the edge of the monitor. In case you haven't noticed, I do have three monitors. I use the three monitors so I can see on my left and on my right using my peripheral vision alone. I do have track IR as you have seen. I use it for a different purpose. I have paused the simulation here now for you. I'm just rotating my head to look around. Now the plane is frozen in place. The buildings are not moving, they don't have legs. So in theory, as I rotate around, the buildings are not escaping from me. So in theory, they should remain constant in size, shape, width, and more importantly, distance from me. I'm very sorry if you get seasick very easily for what you're about to see. This is an aerobatic plane after all, so I use it to show you how I uh, need the three monitors in order to do the maneuvers I'm doing now. Notice how I can see the, f the ground when I'm flying sideways in knife edge. Now look, I now have flipped over so that the buildings are on top of me. I feel that this is a better way of showing you the distortions of the buildings as they race past me. Normally the buildings will be beneath the plane and you cannot really see them very well. Now just watch. Imagine that there was only one monitor, just the one in the middle. So there's no side monitor on the left, there's no one on the right either. In fact, why don't you black out the left monitor with your left hand and the right monitor with your right hand. And you know, your left was just the center monitor. See how the experience completely changes. You don't get the surround view and this impersonness of the simulation. So why am I showing you this? Well, I want to show you that you too want to run this simulation on three monitors or more. Uh, actually, I mean to say that I want you to feel you need to have three monitors in order to get a proper flying experience. But Microsoft FlySim 2020 is in a truly sad state in terms of support for triple monitors. In fact, it doesn't support triple monitors. What you see here is an illusion. A lot of people think it actually works. It doesn't. That's because they haven't seen a truly functional multi-monitor support as you would find, for example, on lots of racing games, car racing games, that is, and also on X-Plane 11. Here I pause the simulation again for you. You can see, watch the plane over there, being stretched into a thin, squashed line as it gets panned from the center of the monitor to the side and back. That's truly, truly amazing and sad. We here at the FMM, the Federation of Multi-Monitors, we need you. We need you to come vote to bring this issue to the table. Now watch, I'm going to fly in between those two buildings now. Uh, back to the program. What was I saying? Oh, right. So you need to come to the official Microsoft Fly Sim forum. There is a wish list item that we need you to help us vote up. Look 
down here in the description of the video.